What, uh, what did you know about dog meat in Korea? Was it a strong association with Korea? When I told my friends I was coming, they were just like, oh, are you going to eat dog every day? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner? I think it's the stereotype you think of, like, um, people in Korea eating dog. So that's just what I heard. The, the practice at all before I came here. Um, I just got acquainted with it when I was hanging around the market. It's funny you guys mentioned that it's illegal to sell it in Seoul, but I did see it sold. And so, okay, it might be illegal, but not, again, not enforced, right? And I, I remember the first time that I went to a, a market, it was like a meat market, and I was just prowling around. I saw a, uh, a cooler, and there was a big dead dog inside with his head, with his tongue hanging out. And, and, and it was, I wasn't prepared for the emotional impact of that experience, you know. Johnny, tell us a little bit about your experience. You were raised in a Korean American family. What did you know about dog meat growing up? Um, I really didn't know anything about it. Uh, my family doesn't eat it. Uh, actually, my family's against it. Um, my mother told me that, you know, if I eat it, make sure you go to a place that's, you know, very sanitized. Uh, she doesn't mind me eating it. Uh, I actually enjoy it. And joining us from out west on Skype, we have uh, Rosalind Morrison. Hello. All right. So, uh, Rosalind, you actually have a blog that has to deal with this. Can you tell us a little bit about that blog and your interest in this topic? Sure. Well, I started the blog about six months ago, and it's basically to try to raise awareness of the way dogs and cats are treated in Korea abroad, because many people back in the West are not aware of the way dogs and cats are treated and the fact that they're eaten, and I wanted to raise awareness of this issue. Um, I actually have driven by one a couple times. And, of course, I was incredibly shocked, and I didn't believe him, so we went in my car, and it said something like yong yong tang, which I looked up. It means nutritional soup. And I went there, and I was giving them Korean stickers I have, which uh, protest the, you know, dog meat, and the woman got very mad. She took the sticker, but she got very mad and just... All right, and just to finish up on our, our personal experiences with it... Uh... Who among us have has had dog meat or boshintang or any kind of dog meat? I'll go first. I have not eaten any kind of dog nor, meat. Nor I'm, have I. I've never tried it. I tried it. I had both the meat and the boshintang, so it's not very good. <laughs> and then um, afterwards, I had to go to the bathroom, and it was a tiny little restaurant. And I went through the kitchen to the bathroom, and there was just a big tub of meat on the floor, and you had to step over it. And I was just kind of like, oh, God, I just ate that. Wow. So... It, I'm all for doing things once, but I don't think I would ever do it again, no. And I, I do want to talk more about kind of anti-dog activism and the role that Westerners or foreigners play in all this, but I did want to finish getting your personal experiences, Johnny. You didn't grow up eating dog meat. Oh. You came to Korea. What happened then? Um, I'm just, I don't know. I, I think I'm a very open-minded person. Um, I'll try anything. In the Bible, it says if you kill an animal for food, there's it's not a sin. Uh I have three dogs back home. I love dogs, but if I'm going to eat it for food, I have I, you know, no qualms about eating it. I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. And we have Rosalind on the line. Rosalind, why do you care so much? Coming to Korea, the biggest culture shock for me was definitely the way animals are treated. But they live on short two-foot chains their entire life, some without dog houses, many without water, etc. And the reason I have such a problem with it is because dogs, are either beaten to death, hung, or electrocuted. The other thing is, is there's a huge myth uh, going around that there's only one breed of dogs that are eaten, which is the big yellow uh, mixed breed of dogs. But in fact, that is not true whatsoever. And 30% of dogs consumed each year were actually once companion animals. I have many pictures of uh, pointers, German short hair pointers and Dalmatians, all kinds of purebred dogs that you will see in more on market. And I think Rosalind speaks on behalf of a lot of foreigners who come here and have this really strong reaction against eating dog meat. Uh, you know, Johnny, I know I, you've been uh, waiting to chime in. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I understand from her uh, point of view, but you know, she grew up probably you know in North America where dogs and cats are uh, man's best friend. And they raised it, and they treated it like an uh, not not like an animal, but a dog. Uh, well, here in Korea, it's a little different. Um, they treat their dogs as animals. They're they're not pets. You know, some families they are pets, but not to all. 
And when Koreans are very cruel to animals, it's because they just look at it as a as an animal, and not their friend or companion or or anything like that. And I think I think that most Westerners have a hard time understanding that point of view. How would you frame it when people say, "Oh, you've lived in Korea, you must eat dog a lot"? What would you say about it now? I would say, if you want to try it, try it. If you don't like it, I think it's rank. Then you don't like it. If you don't want to try it. You don't have to try it. Case closed. I would tell people that it's just a misconception that, you know, dog meat is not, you know, eaten on a widely open basis. It's just a every once in a while kind of thing. Basically, it's we're, we're all better off not eating meat, um, let alone the dog issue. But, uh, you know, from an environmental standpoint, you know, that's where I stand. And... Uh... And that segues nicely into the broader issue of food ethics. And, um, you know, a lot of it's where you draw the line. Well, I'd like Americans and people from other countries to examine how their food is being raised and treated. Uh, I don't know if anyone's seen the documentary Food, Inc. It goes into the American food industry. And, you know, American chickens, Americans like lots of white meat. And so they raise chickens and pump them full of chemicals so that they can be killed after 49 days. And by that point, they're so top-heavy they can't even stand. Uh, and where do you draw the line between um, this is too cruel or, you know, is it – why do people eat veal? Absolutely system? not. Um, that's a, a tremendous concern about the environmental impacts of, of eating meat and, uh, and the sustainability of that practice. Um, that's one of my biggest concerns, and I think most of us would agree now that, you know, the degradation associated with, uh, you know, farming and raising, you know, cattle or, you know, any other livestock, you know, for meat is really kind of devastating, you know, environmentally speaking. And I think some of the expats who come here, they enjoy that. They enjoy the little differences. I think other people come here and just are so annoyed by differences. Mm. And I, I think that's true of expats anywhere they go. Uh, and I... I, on that note, I know we're, we're uh, running out of time, but what words of wisdom and advice do we have? Like I said, I think you know most of the Koreans that that they don't eat dog meat in the first place, and the ones that do have dogs as pets, I think they really care for them. You know, these days if you go to Kwangali on a Sunday night, you'll see so many dogs out there with their owners. Here, I've got uh, respect is very very important. So um, you know, if you're going to go about the business of criticizing or anything, then um, you know, be fair about it. You know, and uh, examine yourself at the same time. Remember that this this isn't your home. You're you're a guest here, and remember you're a guest. And if someone's a guest at your house, you don't want them saying, "Oh, your food's horrible." You know, your bathroom's dirty. You know, you're you're not gonna do that. So just remember. Mm -hmm.